And now, it's time for Mob Talk Radio with your host, Jeff Canarsi. All right, if everybody can hear me, do me a solid. Uh, if you can hit the number one, just to let me know that you can actually hear what I'm saying before we get started. Uh, we've got a lot to cover tonight, and I just want to make sure people can actually hear what I'm saying uh, before we get going. I'm not expecting a lot just because the game is on tonight, and uh, my chat is behind for some reason, so if I don't get to you, uh, don't take it personally. Uh, what's up, West Texas? How are you? Randy, what's shaking? Ruby, how are you? Brian, oh boy, we got a lot of people in here. Uh, so we are, um, uh, yeah, okay, we can get rid of that. Um, <laughs> you do me a favor if you, if somebody in here has a wrench, just get rid of the turds that want to like mention real names and stuff like that. We don't need people like that. Uh, we are going to be covering something very big tonight. Uh, you know, very often we talk about informants, but we're going to show paperwork. And I think there's a big disconnect uh, between what really is, is known versus what can be inferred. Uh, and there's a couple other things I want to talk to before, uh, I get going, but I have to do this, and this is going to aggravate the piss out of a lot of people. It might get me demonetized for doing this, but I'm going to do it anyway. <laughs> one more time, just just for shits and giggles. One more time, if I can get it done. There. We go. I had to do it. I've been an Eagles fan forever and a day. I love the Eagles. Uh, we'll see if they can get it done tonight. All right. So um, there's a lot of things to discuss. Um, and I'm not sure how to do this. Obviously, you guys have read the title to the show. and We're going to show some paperwork tonight. Uh, so just really quickly before we get going, we only have a couple of rules in here. If you're going to come in here and curse and drop people's real name and, and just, uh, you know, say a bunch of stupid shit, please. If you have a wrench, just throw them the fuck out of the room. Cause we don't need that kind of crap in here. Let, let the drama channels, uh, do that for themselves. All right. And so the way I want to start tonight is if you are interested in joining our podcast, it is an award-winning podcast. You can go to mobtalkradioshow.supercast.com. It's $10 a month. Usually we do four to five shows a month if you're interested in that. Uh, like I said, we don't we do not do drama. If you guys want to donate, you can, but it's really not an issue. I'm not here to make money. That's not what I'm here to do. Also, if you want to reach out to the show and send a threat or hate mails, which we get all the time, you can do so by going over to mobtalkradioshow at gmail.com. Now, I said before, we are going to talk about Sammy Gravano. And so here's what I want everybody in the chat to sort of understand. I'm going to go through this, and I'm probably not going to take a ton of time to look in the chat till after I'm done. After I'm done, you guys are welcome to come on and talk, and I'll drop the link and all of that kind of stuff. 
Uh, in the meantime, there's just a couple of things I want to get out of the way. I have to do this. Uh, I need to correct something that I said the last time we did a live about Mikey Scars D. Leonardo. Uh, unlike everybody else on YouTube, I'm the only one that's going to admit I fucked up and I made a mistake. And I need to correct that and I need to own that because that's a part of just, uh, you know, doing things uh, better and more professional. I had said that Mikey Scars had gone on some interviews and he had blamed John Gotti Jr. Uh, for stealing all his money and all this kind of stuff. Uh, the reality is um, that it was Peter Gotti he was specifically talking about, not John Gotti Jr., uh, I don't know why I got confused. I, I think it's just because sometimes when I'm doing a live, I'm talking, I'm looking, and I kind of get confused. But I needed to correct that because it was not Junior he was talking about. It was Pete Gotti. Uh, whether or not that's truly the case, I'm not really sure, and I don't know. But I own up to my own shit. So that's number one. Uh, number two, just really quickly, reading articles and opining is not facts. Uh, it's also not street logic. It's simply an opinion that's not grounded in any reality, and it's only meant to elicit a response, i.e. drama. Uh, and what I mean by that is I recently have been sort of looking around at some of the mob content that is going around, uh, going around and a lot of it's very wrong, and a lot of it is very uh, inaccurate, and a lot of it is designed intentionally to start shit with people. And I just think that the minute that you reach that level where you, you're going to predicate your opinion on how you feel about somebody personally, you're no longer professional. You're just a chump. And that's just kind of the way I see it. Also, no matter how despicable an informant is, leave their fucking children alone. You don't have to like the informant. You can hate them for everything they did. But the kids are just children of these people. And I think anybody who's bringing up their children in any fashion I don't care in what light it is. Don't do it. It's not cool. It's not right. Uh, and I see people doing that. And that's just me. I think if if you want to go out on an informant all day long, do it. But the minute you start talking about their kids, just stop. You don't know the kids. You don't know the background of the family. Leave it the fuck alone, please. Because it just makes you look really bad when you do that kind of stuff. All right. Uh, let me look in the chat really quick. Chris, the cop. Hey, what's shaking? Happy New Year. Easy champion, what's shaking? Mob uh, kings and uh, inf inf infamous rats. Sorry, guys, I'm not wishing there. Uh, I'm not <laughs> I'm not wearing my glasses this evening. Um, let's see. I think the word facts right now is extremely overused. Well, that's, you know, just depends on who you are, I suppose. Uh, I am going to be discussing that towards the end of the show. Uh, just looking through the chat to see how many more I may have missed. If I have not said hello to you, hello, Mark, uh, from Yokohama. All right. So there's one or two other things I really want to touch on really quick before we get going. All right. Um, recently Jeff Nadu, uh, and I have an issue with this and I'm going to bring it up. It's not attacking. Uh, I'm just being honest. Uh, I have heard some really stupid shit in my life. Uh, and like I always try to say on this show. Opinions are like assholes. Everybody's got them. We can all have differing opinions, but when you bend the facts or you invent the facts, then you're no longer really covering mob history. You're inventing it. Okay. Uh, he made some sort of claim about this. He said that John Gotti could have had something to do with Frank Kitachiko getting killed. That's the most asinine, stupid thing I've ever fucking heard in my life. Uh, anybody that is a mob historian, anybody that follows logic knows that there's just absolutely no way, shape or form that that was the case. And if you truly knew mob history, then you wouldn't even say something like that. OK, number two, Vinny the chin. I don't care what any of you say had nothing to do with the death of Frankie DeChico. And there's a bunch of reasons why. All right. And we will get into though, get into that as we go along tonight. Uh, number three, bombs were actually banned by the American Mafia in 1962 by the commission. Now, that doesn't mean that they didn't use them past, you know, past 1962 because they did. We know they used them in Philly uh, and in Ohio and other places. But there's a reason and a very specific reason why they stopped that, and it was because of collateral damage, and that's what brought heat, okay? Secondly, let me just make this very clear about Vinny the Chin. 
If Vincent the Chinjagante wanted John Gotti dead, John Gotti would have been fucking dead. Uh, he's not. Why would why would he align with Gas Pipe Casso on any level? He wouldn't. And, the, and that's just the uh, the truth. Gas Pipe Casso told law enforcement authorities that the intended victim of the, bo the bombing was John Gotti, who had then just taken over the uh, Gambino crime family. And that one of his top men was involved. Ca Gas Pipe would end up going on to say that that involved Danny Marino. I don't believe that to be the case. In fact, the piece of shit we're going to talk about tonight, I think, is the guy he secretly was actually talking about. Um, let's see. Uh, I guarantee you, uh, other than informants, uh, you know, th this is a very important thing to me, too. And a lot of people aren't going to like that I say this. Do not believe any of these content creators other than the ones that are speaking to informants talk to any mob related guys behind the scenes. That's a straight up fucking lie and it's not true. So please don't believe it. Um, you know, mob guys are not going to speak to anybody that talks to rats nonstop or is platformed every rat. That's just the truth. And I'm just telling you how it is. I'm just telling you how it is. So don't believe that kind of nonsense either. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chris Gorky, what's up? Oh, all right. Should we play the song again, Easy Champion? <laughs> what's up, Frank? How are you? Um, so here's the thing, right? So a lot of people may say, well, how do you know that Vinny the Chin was not involved in that? Uh, because a lot of people said he wanted God he dead. That may have been that that may have been how he felt, but there was also the backdrop, and that's that's my issue with Nadu, is he doesn't explain the backdrop is that Gaspipe Casso and Angelo Ruggiero were in a beef, all right, over narcotics specifically. Uh, Ruggiero decided to kill Gaspipe Casso. They botched up that murder. Gaspipe finds out uh, the Jimmy Heidel, who was Danny Marino's nephew, did it. And Gaspipe is going to start the bloodletting, and he's going to go after everybody for that specific reason. Uh, and when you're in the streets, it's always an eye for an eye. That's how things work. If they can't get one guy, they'll get another guy. Taking out Frankie DeChico, on, which was Gas Pipe's move, makes a lot of sense because Gotti's going to lose the powerhouse he has his underboss at the time. Now, let me ask you a simple question. Who is the one that stood to gain the most from Frankie DeChico going away? Who stood to gain the most? John Gotti did not hide. John Gotti literally was seen everywhere. So the idea that it was impossible in a certain kind of way to murder him anywhere is just bullshit. Uh, and I think Vinny the Chin Gigante, if he really wanted John Gotti dead, he would have been dead. They wouldn't have gone to gas pipe for that. They absolutely, absolutely wouldn't have. But like I said, that's going to be sort of a, a matter of opinion. Uh, so those are all kind of the things I wanted to say really quick. But... Uh, I, I just wanted to say for the record that once again, I, I apologize for making a mistake, guys. I'm better than that. Uh, I have to own that. Uh, but like I said, when I am wrong, um, I'm the first to admit it and correct it. And that that wasn't that wasn't good on my part. That was laziness. I got to admit it was laziness on my part. Just being forgetful. So all of that being said, um, we are going to bring up a lot of stuff this evening. I could have brought up. We could sit here literally from now until four o'clock in the morning with the paperwork that I have. Uh, these are facts. Now, I could sit here all day and tell you that uh, the sky is green. And you could say, yeah, all right, whatever you're saying, it doesn't make it fucking so. So rather than say it, I'm going to show you. And what I am not going to do is draw parallels where there are not. Uh, I also want to tell you this is not a gaudy fluff piece. There may be some things in this that, that, maybe not make him look like the greatest human being on earth. But I just want people to understand there was a larger manipulation going on. There was a manipulation by the government. And then there was Sammy Gravano who was lying about a lot of stuff. I'm going to show you proof that he perjured himself. I'm going to show you proof that the prosecutor in that, ca that case, the, who's now, well, he went on to be a judge, Judge Gleason found out that there was information that could perjure Gravano and buried it until after Gotti was convicted. Uh, anytime that you're in a criminal case, when uh, stuff comes to light, in fairness to the defendants and even to the prosecution, you have to provide that information uh, under discovery. And if it's something where the trial's already begun, 
the lawyers have to literally inform the judge that this is going on, but you're going to find out that Gleason buried it. Not only did Gleason bury that, but he buried DEA reports that proved that Gravano was selling narcotics, which Gravano said repeatedly he didn't. You're also going to see as we go on that John Gotti is realizing very, very quickly, unfortunately too late in his case, that Gravano was essentially lying to him and using him. Like I said, uh, this is not in any way, shape, or form a Gotti fluff piece. This is just spitting the facts. That's all this is. Uh, yes, it was a hit intended for Frankie DeChico, 100%. Absolutely 100%. Um, sorry, guys. I uh, I have uh, – I, I got to turn my phone off. I'm a degenerate for doing that. Anyway, um, let's see. I'm going to look at the chat for just one second before we get going. Do you think the uh, – if the rats lies came out, what kind, what time, you know what? Here's the truth. Easy champion. And I think, um, I, I think that, that the Gotties might even tell you this too, but I'm not going to speak for them. I never have. And I never will. I don't think that even with this information that we have, I don't think it would have changed the outcome. You have to remember there were 100 people actively informing on John Gotti. They were actively informing on him. So it's not like you remove Gravano off the table. Everything's just easy. Uh, the secondary thing is the government, you know, basically buried the fact that Gravano killed Alan Kaiser, who was a 16 year old kid. And they intentionally had to let out who was murdered, but they called him John Doe. And the reason why they did that was because, A, when you're a minor, they cannot print your name in a paper. Two, at the time, Kaiser's family did not even know Gravano had done that. Uh, and number three, if if they tell the newspaper that they're going to print that and that's going to really make Gravano look really fucking bad on the stand. And these are all just uh, facts. Uh, they're, they're just facts. Uh, so whatever you guys want to take from this, you can take from this. But like I said, I promise you under everything that I am, this is all factual. This is all information that people can acquire. Uh, I can appreciate when people attack informants, but paperwork screams volumes. And you can't just read paperwork. You have to look at the paperwork. Then you have to go to Pacer and you have to look at everybody's paperwork because sometimes things change. But you are going to see. You are going to see. Yeah, a lot of people, Donald, a lot of people don't know. They think it was just Sammy Gravano and Phil Leonetti and and Willie Boy Johnson they have no idea 100 men at one given time are all providing information on Gotti um and, and that's just the case so i am going to attempt uh Sharon thank you very much i appreciate it uh listen i try to do what i can i'm not perfect uh i'm really not good at these live things but we're going to get into this and hopefully um i can do this the right way i'm i'm kind of new to like sharing stuff aha uh -huh. Let me hit. Can you guys see this? Do me a favor. Uh, press. I'm going to click off that for a second. Hit number one. If you can see the file that's on the screen that says Gravano Rat Gem Steel, which is from the FBI page one. I just want to make sure you guys can actually see this. Okay. All right. Uh, Chris, do me a favor. You got to wrench. You see anybody getting salty? do what she's got to do. All right. So what I'm going to do is I am not only going to read these to you, but I'm going to kind of explain uh, what's going on because I think it doesn't do you any favors if I don't. So the date of this transcript was 11, 25, 91. Uh, it's basically Sammy Gravano sitting down uh, talking about William Melito and, and Jem steel. And there's a reason why we're bringing this up because remember, I've always told you that if Gravano couldn't earn it, he'd steal it. And he would lie and manipulate and capitulate to get people murdered to take over their businesses. So uh, a cooperating witness who is, in this case, Sammy Gravano, advised that Louis Melito was killed by a member of the Gambino La Cosa Nostra family. Melito was one of Sammy Gravano's people. He had direct relationship with Gravano and his faction as well as Frankie DeChico. Melito and Gravano were friends for years. Gravano proposed Melito to be made in the Gambino family. Uh, when he was made, a soldier Melito was placed in the crew of Salvatore Tato Arello. Uh, Melito's relationship with Gem Steel is also through Gravano. One day, Gravano was told by Frankie DeChico that Melito was present in Paul Castellano's house. That's bullshit. I can tell you that's bullshit 100%. Okay. 
Uh, that's just Paul was not going to let a fucking nobody in his house. I'm just telling you. Uh, there in front of Tommy Bellotti, Castellano made an idle threat about killing Sammy Gravano. Once again, bullshit. Upon hearing this plot, Bolito panicked and without Gravano's knowledge, terminated. This is what I want you to focus on. Without uh, focus on this right here. Upon hearing this plot, Molito panicked and without Gravano's knowledge, terminated the business partnership with Gravano. Instead, Molito went into partnership with Tommy Bellotti, knowing Gravano and others' ill feelings towards Tommy Bellotti and Castellano. So, what he's essentially doing is trying to make a, a sort of a reasonable excuse as to why he was killed because he wants to deflect what he's about to do. All right. Uh, thereafter, Melito went to jail. While Melito was in jail, Frankie DeChico told Gravano that he, DeChico, would kill Melito upon his release. However, Gravano told DeChico that he could live with whatever Melito had done. Indeed, after Melito's release from prison, Gravano told Melito that he had forgiven him for his deeds but would no longer be doing anything with him. Moreover, uh, Louis Valario, a.k.a. Big Louie, would be Gravano's main guy. Melito also made the mistake of aligning himself with Joey Bellotti. After having done what he had, Melito should have stayed away from Bellotti. Uh, Melito did not accept this. He would never go over to Gravano's house, and he would send uh, Mario Mastromarino with messages. In addition, Melito started doing what Robert Bernardo, a.k.a. DB, had been accused of doing, and that is talking behind people's backs. Now, you want to see this get really interesting? Do me a favor. Hit number one if you're still following along, just so I know that you guys aren't lost. Do, do, do. I just want to see some ones that you guys are following along. Is everybody um, uh, Gravano, uh, Dustin, Gravano uh, had 36 guys put in prison. Okay, you guys are following along. Nobody's confused. All right, I really need you to go back really quick and see the yellow highlights. I really want you to focus on that. Because Gravano is laying the groundwork for, for why Melito is killed. Remember, this business is all about Gem Steel, which was a multi million dollar business. And I think you guys know where this is going, right? Here we go. Direct testimony. These are God John Gotti wiretaps. This is what John Gotti is saying to Frankie Lacasio It's a big building. I know, uh, I don't know where six, six million, 20 million, whatever it is. But what, what, what are we, what are we going here, Frankie? Frankie, where the hell did all these new companies come from? Where did five new, new companies come from? I mean, when uh, Nazabeek died, you were nothing. Louis had Gem Steel. You told me that the guy talked behind my back. Now you got Gem Steel. The other thing you told me, DB cried behind my back. Uh, now you got all that, and you got uh, Bobby Sasso, and it continues. Gotti on wiretap. Yeah, but let me tell you, Frankie, there's creating and there's creating. Now, look, Frankie, you want to put your head with fucking Sammy? You're too bright for that. Uh, then he asks a question. DB, did he ever talk subversive to you? Frankie, never. Gotti, he never talked it to D'Angelo. He never talked it to Joe Piney. I took Sammy's word that he talked behind my back. Louie, did he ever talk to any of you guys? Lacasio, no. Gotti. I took Sammy's word, Louis de Bono. I sat with this guy. I saw the papers and everything. He didn't rob nothing. You know why he's dying. He's going to die because he refused to come in when I called. He didn't do nothing else wrong. Now, this is what I need to explain. Granted, there is a difference between Louis de Bono, all right, and Robert DiBernardo. Okay, there, there's a difference because both were DBs. But this is, once again, you have up here, Gotti's explaining this guy didn't have any fucking companies. They're coming out of fucking nowhere. Louie owned gem steel. Now all of a sudden you fucking own it. Then he's mentioning that he was told people were talking shit behind his back. And this is basically right in here. Gotti, when he's explaining to Frankie, he's like, you know, guys are creating businesses, but look, you want to, you want to be next to Sammy with all this crazy shit. You're, you're too smart for that. Stay away from the guy. Then he asks again, did you ever hear anybody talking shit? Never. So what does Gotti do? He goes behind the scenes. He starts talking to everybody. He takes his word. He takes his Sammy's word as gospel. 
in the case of Louis DeBono. Sammy Gravano told everybody Louis DeBono was stealing money from the family. In other words, he wasn't kicking up his due diligence. He was burying money. But Gotti gets all of the paperwork where Gravano says that uh, Louis DeBono was ripping them off. And Gotti's like, I looked at everything. He's not stealing a fucking thing from us. But then Gotti sends word through Sammy to somebody else to tell Louis DeBono to come in. And now Louis DeBono is scared shitless. So that that it is what it is. But you can see uh, that in this particular case, he's lying. He's he's fucking lying and setting him up. Edwin Jimenez, thank you very much, kind sir. I hope you're doing great this evening. Uh, once again, it, it's Gotti realizing way too fucking late into the game that everything that Gravano has told him has been a lie. Look at everybody that Gravano killed. He took their fucking businesses. That was his motive. Every, I love it when people come on these shows and they go, oh, Gravano was a, a construction wizard. He was the smartest fucking guy in the world. No, he stole businesses by killing people. That's what he did. If he couldn't acquire it on his own, because I know people that knew Sammy and they told me the guy couldn't fucking nail a fucking nail into the wall. He knew nothing about construction. And, and that's just the truth. So this idea that, that Gravano was some brilliant uh, schemer and, and, and crazy guy, it's bullshit. And you're going to find out now in, in a few minutes how many murders he was allowed to confess to. Because there's a difference between 19 murder conspiracies and pulling the trigger yourself. Just saying. All right. So this next section literally came from uh, Frankie Lacasio's and John Gotti's uh, sort of rebuff. Uh, and so I'm going to go through it really quick. Uh, the primary basis for these motions is new evidence, which allegedly establishes that Gravano, a witness on behalf of the government, committed perjury. Can you guys see that? Maybe I'll hold on. Oops. Hold on. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. Hold on a second. Hold on. Let me look at the screen. Okay. So the primary basis for these motions and the new evidence, which allegedly establishes that Salvatore Gravano, a witness on behalf of the government, committed perjury when he testified at their trial. This evidence is the claimed discovery that Gravano committed crimes in addition to those that he admitted during the course of his testimony and therefore was not cross-examined with due respect to them. Uh, the crimes are Gravano's involvement in a conspiracy to import cocaine into the United States, the successful completion of which – which was frustrated by the seizure of a large quantity of cocaine in July of 91 from a fishing vessel named Hunter Gravano's murder of a person named Jules Cass in the course of an armed robbery in 1972 Gravano's enlistment of a person named Steve Goodman to extort Donald Malley, whose death was caused by a beating administered by Goodman. Gotti further claims as does Lacasio that the government had knowledge of Gravano's alleged perjury and denying his involvement with drugs, failing to disclose that alleged perjury and thus intentionally misled the jury in obtaining their convictions. And we have proof of these things. So it's not just uh, it's sort of the, uh, you know, the rebuff. The alleged concealment of Gravano's participation in the narcotics conspiracy was especially egregious. The defendants claim because of Gravano's stand against drugs, which he testified at trial. And you're going to see the testimony. We're going to show it where he, <laughs> swears up and down he would never get involved in drugs on page five but then on page seven he's admitting to talking about drugs so you're gonna you're gonna see what how full of shit this guy really is uh they basically uh gravano did not really have an incentive incentive to tell the truth etc uh we don't need the background everybody knows why they were arrested um let me just go down here. Okay. Pending the appeal, defendants filed a second motion for a new trial pursuant to Rule 33. That motion was prompted, prompted by the discovery of then Assistant uh, United States Attorney and now Judge John Gleason. Gleason, who was the lead prosecutor at their trial in that course of preparing trial of the United States versus Vic Reyna. He received information obtained by Alphonse Diarco, a government witness who had been a major organized crime figure that Diarco reported that he had heard that Gravano was involved in other murders, which he didn't acknowledge at the defendant's trial. After speedily confirming uh, that the trial team had never heard this allegation before, Gleason disclosed that information to the attorneys for Gotti and Lucasio. The motion that followed advanced the contention that newly discovered evidence established that Gravano lied at trial 
and uh, that what would have been impeachment material was knowingly suppressed by the government. And that's a big issue because this isn't the first thing that came to Gleason's sort of knowledge. Uh, and what they should have done at that point was sort of investigate what they were hearing. Now, Al Diarco wasn't the only one. There were some 16 different people who came forward and all told the government some were in prison at the time. Patsy Conti uh, was one of them, came forward and told the government that Gravano was one of the biggest drug dealers uh, in the Gambino crime family. And instead of, you know, the FBI going to interview these guys in jail, they ignored every request. They buried letters. Uh, they said that the testimony just didn't make sense because they didn't believe it. Well, you don't have to believe it, but when 15 people are coming forward telling you the same exact story, it's funny how this works. If 15 fucking rats come forward and say that, the government believes it. But if it's 15 people trying to help somebody that have nothing to gain, they just ignore it like it doesn't exist. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. Uh, relying upon reports obtained by the defense counsel in an unrelated case, as special agents of the FBI had interviewed Diarco prior to their trial, they claimed that knowledge of Diarco's hearsay must have been known to a government trial team. So they're calling it hearsay, uh, and, and it basically is without proving it. But it, basically, this is the attorney saying the government, you know, knew this and just did nothing with it. Uh, okay, so the Conti letter. Uh, it stated it, what happened is Patsy Conti wrote a letter and he basically in his own way kind of dimed Gravano out saying, listen, this guy's the biggest drug dealer. He was the one that was in charge of all of these drugs moving and et cetera. This letter uh, stated that Gravano upon acting upon Gotti's instruction told Conte that he could resume his heroin importation activity. Upon learning of that letter, the defendants filed a supplemental brief in their pending appeal, urging the government's knowing reliance upon Gravano's perjury when he testified that he was against drugs. All right. Uh, July 30th, and this is the Hunter conspiracy, and this is the, the basis for the fourth motion. Uh, on July 30th of 1991, seven months after Gravano was arrested in December of 1990 and ordered uh, detained pending trial, an indictment was filed charging Peter Calf uh, Califano and 10 others with the conspiracy to import cocaine into the United States and conspiracy to distribute and possess with the intent to distribute cocaine. The events upon which the indictment was based and its aftermath are described on these following pages. Uh, to, uh, July 21st to 91, the government seized the fishing vessel Hunter several miles off the shore of Fire Island National Park. A search, vessel refilled, uh, search of the vessel revealed more than 4,000 kilos of cocaine uh, secreted in cargo bins below deck. The cocaine had been transferred to the Hunter earlier in the day from the Blue Crown One, which was a Panamanian cargo vessel. Uh, Peter Califano, Hunter's captain, John uh, Sirocco, a member of his crew and the captain crew of the Panamanian vessel were all arrested and indicted, United States versus Peter Califano. Uh, Califano pleaded guilty on October 17th of 1991 before Gravano had first indicated to the government his interest in cooperation. So that tells you that he did he essentially had told the government about Gravano anyway before uh Gravano even decided to uh agree to uh testify uh what is a little interesting in this is that uh Califano would be sentenced on March 12th of 93 to a term of 188 months over the government's opposition opposition to its leniency Soraka was permitted to plead in a much lesser offense because of his mental order and disorder and retardation. He was sentenced to a term, excuse me, a probation, which required him to continue with psych psychiatric care. Uh, this is what's interesting. The third member of Califano's crew was a DEA informant who never implicated Gravano in that conspiracy, which is very strange because you're going to see as we go on, there's more to it. Uh, in an affidavit by Gleason, he swears <laughs> at the time the hunter was seized, he and other members of the Gotti prosecution team were continuing with the grand jury investigation of the Gambino family and also preparing this case for trial that he learned of the seizure from news reports, which related that among those arrested was an associate of the Gambino family 
and that Gotti's son, which is bullshit, was believed to be involved in the event and that he debriefed Got Gravano extensively between the time he began cooperating with the government and March 92 when he testified at the Gotti trial, a period of four months. And during that period, he questioned Gravano about a wide variety of crimes, including the cocaine seizure from the hunter that Gravano denied knowledge of or involvement of in the event and didn't know who was involved in it. I believed then and believe now that Gravano's statements on this subject were truthful. This is what Gleason said without even talking to Patsy Conti, without talking to any of the people like uh, Al Diarco, everybody who came forward and said this was Gravano's boat. He was partners with Gas Pipe Castle in this boat, uh, but yet they didn't want to investigate anybody. Uh, and Gleason sort of finds out about this boat stuff uh, right as trial was going on, but just doesn't mention anything, doesn't stop, doesn't try to investigate, nothing like that. And I think that, uh, you know, you're, you're talking about a massive crime and, and people are saying that your, your uh, informant, for lack of better terms, is the one that's the one that's involved. Uh, and the fact that they just don't investigate it and don't seem to give a shit is odd to me. Gleason's affidavit goes on to declare that he recently learned that in late September of 91, uh, an informant told DE agents that he heard a rumor from a third person that he would refuse to identify that Gravano was responsible for arranging the cocaine shipment. Then, as you notice, Gleason goes on to say, I had not previously been aware of this information. Even if I had, I would not have questioned Gravano differently and either in preparing the, the direct examination or at trial, but that totally, if you look back up here, it's, it's two different statements. It's two different statements. He says one thing and then says another thing that are almost the complete opposites. And then he's saying, well, but even if, even if I had known about it, which up here in the other uh, thing, we know he knew, we know that he knew about it. Uh, to me, it's just, it's the government. It, it's just the government playing games. That's what they do. Uh, January 29th of 96 U S attorney Orenstein declares after this motion for a new trial was filed. He reviews, he reviewed the closed files. Why are they closed? It's, it should be an open case uh, of the Hunter case, which consisted of several large boxes containing thousands of pages and documents that review yielded merely two documents, which even suggest that Gravano may have had a role in importation conspiracy. Of these two documents, only one was in existence at the time of Gotti's conviction. All right. And this is, and neither was known to any member of the prosecution team in this case until last week. All right. Now you guys can say you believe that shit. I don't. I think it's hilarious that there's two documents that mention Gravano. There's 15 other people that are mentioning Gravano. They do nothing to mention that. They don't bring it up. They don't investigate. They want the charges to go away. And then they have the balls to come back and say, oh, we didn't know till after his conviction. And in my opinion, that's prejudicial at best. And that's basically them uh, refusing, 100% refusing to acknowledge what is glowingly obvious is that they have somebody who's full of shit uh, giving them information. Uh, just zero oversight whatsoever. It's, oh, well, it, it's so convenient that this is found suddenly after Gotti's conviction. Now, if all of this came to, to note, would this have changed Gotti's conviction? Probably not. But at least John and Frankie Loke would have had something to substantiate proving uh, sort of a character reflection of whether he's telling the truth or not. And that's what it all comes down to the plausibility of whether the jury believes what this puke is saying. Uh, so the first and only document in existence prior to the Gotti trial was a DEA report in December 10th of 91, in which a DEA agent recorded an interview with an informant. The informant is stated to, to have told the agent that he heard a rumor from a source that he wasn't going to identify that Gravano was the primary person who arranged for the hunter to pick up the cocaine. So here's my point to you. If this was a, if this was a, um, uh, 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 an anti gaudy guy and you have the anti gaudy rat saying that, Oh, I heard John was involved in that. 
you better believe your motherfucking ass that this would have been the first fucking thing the feds would have brought up. Because they could have hammered Gotti on huge drug charges, forget it. But I just find it awful fucking convenient that once again, the only existent, the only document in exist your existence prior was the D. Don't you guys think that a DEA report is substantial? The government it picks and chooses now what DEA reports that they're going to fucking believe and which ones they're not. And listen, like I told you, we could do this till three in the morning. I could bring you another hundred pages of stuff like this. And like I said, this is not going to make John Gotti innocent, but it's reasonable doubt. And when you get convicted of a jury of your peers, there has to be reasonable doubt. And if your main witness is a liar and is doing the same crimes he's going to deny here in about three minutes under oath. Unbelievable. The second document, which was dated September 23rd of 92, five months after <laughs> you guys love this or not. I, I think this is hilarious. It's disgusting. The second document, which was dated September 23rd of 92, five months after the jury verdict in the Gotti case was another DEA report describing a statement by a different participant in the Hunter conspiracy. So you have one DEA report that says, hello, this was fucking Gravano's deal. No, no, no. You know, let's just not pay attention to this. Five months after Gotti's convicted, they get another one from a different person, along with the 15 other letters they had, including the Patsy Conti letter. And they're ignoring all of this? This informant recounted yet another participant who told him that he arranged the cocaine importation and that big people were involved. Uh, let's see. So the assistant U.S. attorney, uh, Orenstein's affidavit, then describes the basis for his declaration that no member of the Gotti trial team had knowledge of those reports prior to re the return of the jury's verdict. So in other words, the defense didn't, didn't have any goddamn clue. Didn't have any clue. So in 1989 and 1991, a shipment of cocaine, okay, came in. Uh, there was DeSantis who was involved in this. Uh, and what's very, very interesting about DeSantis is, once again, we're talking about a, a massive example of drugs coming in. Uh, and once again, Gravano is linked to the Hunter conspiracy. But what's interesting is, is DeSantis for some other reason, uh, makes some sort of agreement. Uh, and the indictments against him are dismissed. It's just crazy what the, the, the feds do. But once again, we have Gravano being mentioned in the Hunter conspiracy. Okay. Now, this is something we we we've got to like talk about, and I need you to I, I I need to explain this because the people that hate John Gotti are going to use this as a weapon, and so I really hope that you guys listen to me after I talk about this. Gotti was aware of Casos, also known as gas, gas pipes, involvement in the importation of narcotics as far back as November thirtieth of nineteen eighty nine. Okay. Gotti, uh, they could pick one out with a gas pipes boat got caught in Howard Beach on Freeport. Uh, 50,000 bales or 50,000 pounds, 50,000 tons. Did that happen at one time? That is the government's interpretation of this is that Gotti is talking about them getting drugs. These are transcripts. Is he not asking a rhetorical fucking question? Is he not asking Sammy Gravano about this? He's not saying, oh, this, mo this money comes to us, this money. No, he's saying, he's basically saying, oh, I heard they seized a boat and I heard that gas pipe, you know, lost 50,000 pounds, 50,000 bales, 50,000, whatever. Did that happen at one time? This is Cotty asking Gravano, who was fucking involved in this exact case. This is what they lost in the Hunter. Gravano, I don't really know. Cotty's like, I don't know. So it's just the government cherry picks this wiretap and what they literally wrote in the notes was that Gotti talking about this meant he was involved. He's asking a fucking question. It's not code for, Hey, are the 50,000 fucking barrels coming to my house this week or yours? 
He's asking legitimately if that's true. And Gravato, oh, I really don't know. But yet he was involved in it. Unreal. So uh, Richard Raybach um, turned in an affidavit. Uh, and, and this is basically, is they recount a meeting that he and a private investigator had with Peter Califano, who was the hunter captain. And he's in a federal prison, which Califano is currently incarcerated. Raybach relates that Califano told him that his direct liaison to the cocaine conspiracy was a person named Tommy Carew, a.k.a. Tommy Irish. And that Carew informed him, Califano, that the cocaine was for Anthony Gaspipe Castle and Salvatore Gravano. Raybach's affidavit goes on to state that while the case was pending, Califano learned of Gravano's cooperation with the government and that the government never sought. Hold on a minute. The government never sought to learn from him to whom he was to deliver the drugs. So they knew about it, but chose not to act on it. They chose not to act. No, it's not Ron DeSantis. <laughs> so there you go. And it should be added that he never volunteered to relate this information until any well, anyone else until now. So that's the government's theory because he never brought it up. That it doesn't count. Oh, well, he's only bringing it up now. Why didn't he bring it up? Well, he tried to, but his letters and everything that he told the DEA and everybody, nobody would go and see him. Nobody would listen to him. Raybach would conclude by stating that Califano informed him that Tommy Irish is fully familiar with the participation of Castle and Gravano in the Hunter affair and that he and Califano are available for further discussions on the matter. Meaning if the government wants to come talk to us, we'll tell them what we fucking know. It's a rat fucking move, but they're doing the, the right thing by other people who are being blamed for shit. All right. The government had no information when Gotti was tried that Gravato had any involvement in the Hunter affair and any information that he did submitted in support of this motion is hearsay uh, from sources of questionable credibility. So once again, this is the Fed saying we don't believe what these guys have to say. So we're just not even going to listen to it. Yet if a motherfucking rat walks into the FBI office tomorrow and gives up fucking whoever, Joey the woman or Jimmy the fish or Nikki potato salad, they're going to listen and write it the fuck down. That's what they do. Okay, this is important. Gravano acknowledged in his agreement to tell the truth and detail his criminal past. He acknowledged his understanding that it was, it was in his best interest not to get caught in any kind of lie uh, and not to admit it. Uh, for me not to admit it and get caught in a lie, then the government would be able to prosecute me on everything I did admit to and what they found out about. So what you're about to find is that Gravano can't tell the fucking truth. This is a cross-examination uh, by the Gotti lawyers. Uh, now, is it your testimony? Is it that in those debriefings, you told the prosecution about every single act that you committed? I believe I did. Question, you did? Look at this answer. Maybe not in detail, but I believe I did. Are you telling us that you detailed all your crimes? No, I didn't detail them all. So what the fuck is the point of a cooperation agreement if you're not going to detail your crimes? Uh, from where I stand, it's always been that you have to tell them everything you did. Every rat that's on YouTube will tell you that now. They had to allegedly tell everything that they did. You made a list of all the crimes you can remember in effect orally or in writing in those couple of days. Yes. All right. And you left nothing out to the best of my recollection, to the best of my recollection. All right. So more questions. So if it comes to pass, you remember a crime you forgot, to, you, you forgot to tell them, you would tell them about it. Well, yes. Do you remember a crime that you had forgotten? You told them, okay, hold on. When you remember a crime that you had forgotten, you tell them about it. You expect Listen, this is very, very close here, or very important. You expect not to be prosecuted for that disclosure of that crime, criminal act, regardless of when you disclosed it, correct? Meaning he can say whatever he wants, whatever the fuck he wants to, and he's not going to pay, pay a, a day in jail for it. I would imagine if I left out in detail and good faith that there's a possibility nothing would happen. Uh, oh, I love this one. 
Uh, when Mr. Gleason was asking you questions concerning whether the government knew of these various murders, you were res you were responding that you had told them and that you pled guilty in order to get them behind you, right? Not really. <laughs> um, so it, it goes on a little bit more. Okay. This is a good one. This is the, the and listen, I, I had to kind of go all over the place with these guys because there's just so much material. And I wanted to try uh, to really highlight on this stuff. I wouldn't have to over explain. OK, you guys are going to love this. So this is a transcript from 11 91 It's going to correspond with some not only some testimony, but some facts. November 14th of 91, a cooperating witness who is Sammy Gravano advised that approximately two or three years ago, a man was killed by members of the Gambino crime family in Astoria area of Queens and retaliation for the murder uh, by this man and his sons, another male first name unknown Gambino, a made guy with the Gambino, blah, 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 who was from Italy uh, name unknown. Okay. Subsequent investigation has determined that the individual who was killed was Francesco Oliveri and will hereafter be referred to as such. Gravano advised the contract to kill Oliveri was given to John Gambino. Oliveri was known to live in an apartment house in Astoria, on the day of the murder, committed early in the morning, Gravano, who was then consigliere of the Gambino crime family, rode in the car with Lorenzo, I'm not saying that last name, uh, who is not made, not a made member of the Gambino crime family. Well, Robert uh, Pisacchia, known a.k.a. Cabert, and Joey Gambino and Giuseppe Gambino, who is John Gambino's brother, drove in another car. Um Arriving at the apartment house, all four men waited for Oliveri to exit the building. Upon exiting the apartment house, uh, Basakia shot Oliveri, who was left dangling on a tree. He stated that Basakia, who was then a soldier and a captain in Michael, Michael blah, 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 blah's crew, uh, they selected the shooter because he had balls. Um, let me find. Okay. Here we go. This is what I wanted to bring up. Uh, at the time you testified about the Oliveri murder and the Gotti trial, did you recall that Ozzy Stantini was involved? Okay, so I'm going to go back up here. Do you guys see Stantini mentioned anywhere in this 302? 1120 of 91, November 14th. Do you see Stantini mentioned anywhere in this 302? You're not going to. You know why? Because he just made shit up on the fucking fly. At the time you testified about the Oliveri murder and the Gotti trial, did you recall that Ozzy Stantini was involved in the murder trial? No. You guys are going to love this. Could you explain to the jury how you recall today that Ozzy was involved in the Oliveri murder? Well, I was debriefed about it. It was one of the homicides that we touched on. As I spoke about this hit, I completely left out Ozzy. I forgot that Ozzy was involved. How can you, this is a guy who, for, who who remembers what Paul Castellano's cock pump looks like. He can't remember a hit. He can't remember a hit. I forgot to mention it. Oh, you, you just forget. Oh, okay. Sometime later after the trial, I received a phone call from an FBI agent by the name, name of Tom Petruski, And he asked if Ozzy Stantini knew about the Oliveri hit. And I told him, I'll get back to you. And I hang up the phone. And then I immediately remember at that point that not only did he know, but he was involved in it. And then I forgot to say it when I was debriefed. You believe this shit? This is a guy who was charged in 19 murder conspiracies, tells every murder story down to the buttons a motherfucker was wearing before he whipped out his cock and Sammy sucked on it. That's just the truth. He can remember that, but yet he cannot remember for the life of him. Oh, an agent called me and he brings up a name and I hang up. And then all of a sudden, I don't know, I bump my head off the desk, leave the, leave the change for the crack whore on the corner. And I remember this is the type of shit he did all through the Gotti trial. So the question, so what did you do? Well, the next day I thought about it a while. And then I called the U S attorney, John Gleason, and I told him what had happened. He told me he would send down a team of people, agents or whatever, to come down and talk to me about it to see and find out what happened. Now, between the time you spoke to Agent Petruski and the time that you called Mr. Gleason, what were you thinking about? What was I thinking about? I thought about how serious it would be to forget a situation like that. I thought about how the government would react to that. 
I thought about how the defense attorney would think about it and react to it and try to possibly et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Over and over and over again, this is what happened. This is important too. Many uh, the the many crimes which the defendants were charged with did not include a violation of the drug laws in any respect. Throughout the trial, the defendants emphasized that point repeatedly, vociferously objected to any testimony which suggested that the defendants were involved in any drug offense and requested the court on more than one occasion to instruct the jury that narcotics trafficking is not one of the issues before them. All right. Here we go. Gravano said this for all you little gaudy fucking haters. I want you to pay attention to this because your fucking hero Gravano said this. Gravano said that he knew as an absolutely unquestioned fact John Gotti is dead set against drugs. Do I need to say anything else? So let's go to some questions. The drug situation. And they're out there talking to Gravano. You got to stand against drugs, don't you? Well, yes. And you have a principle against drugs, right? Well, yes. Okay. So we're going to go down. Do you have any, did you have any personal conversations with Patsy Conti about drugs? Yes. Wait a minute. Didn't he just say he had a stance against drugs, wanted nothing to do with drugs? For those of you that don't know, Patsy Conti was a major drug dealer and he was kicking up a ton of fucking money to Paul Castellano. Castel, Castellano didn't want to know where the money came from. He didn't ask. But, but Gravano knows that Conti's a drug dealer. All right. Uh, and where did you have these conversations outside the Ravenite club in the street? Uh, do you know approximately when you had these conversations? And if you can use a benchmark, uh, you said you were arrested on December of 1990. Is, is it in about relation to that? A couple of months before. I'm sorry, you said how many months approximately? A couple of months. Could be four, five, uh, whatever. All right. So he says, I approached Pat. Okay, hold on. Um, I need to read this. Okay, according to him, he said that John Gotti told him that since we took over, Patsy Conti wasn't kicking up. He told me to approach him, talk to him off the record, give him some sort of tacit approval. So this is a lie because basically what it is, is, and, and this is the God's honest truth about how the streets work, and this is what nobody will tell you. A captain or a boss doesn't give a fuck how you make that money. He does not want to know. But if you're kicking up $25,000 a week to Paul Castellano, that you better goddamn believe that's coming to John Gotti. That's just how the streets operate. But Gravano is trying to twist this into a drug conspiracy. And so the government says, well, when you say he was doing what with Paul? Well, what Patsy Conti was doing with Paul Castellano as far as giving him money. He wanted it to happen with him, meaning John Gotti. Do you see anywhere where this says drugs? Drug money? No, he just wants money. Doesn't matter where he gets it from. I approach Patsy Conti. I walk with him. I, I, I told him I was aware of the Castellano thing. I told him it wasn't an investigation. I wasn't investigating him for doing drugs or being in the drug business. I told him to follow my conversation. I told him that we knew that he had Paul and, and Paul, he had earned big money for Paul. So once again, you're seeing this is like, first of all, motherfuckers in the street don't talk like this. They just, listen, they may talk in code around other people, but one-on-one, -on -one, they're not going to talk like that. Okay. Uh, you know, I think it's funny that he says, oh, I wasn't investigating him for doing drugs or being in the drug business. And he, the reason why he says that is because he's already said John Gotti was dead set against drugs. Those are just facts. Uh, so where are we? Uh, okay. He told me since John took over that he had stopped selling drugs, which only proves that Gotti off, uh, issued an edict to his men. Do not sell drugs. And he assured me that he didn't do anything during the period after John Gotti took over. He was a little nervous about the conversation, I think. I told him whatever he was doing, we wanted it to happen again under John. John had troubles with the courts and lawyers and administration was broke and we needed some money. So I more or less gave him tacit approval to go back and start his drug operation or whatever he was doing. So Gravano was the one breaking the rules here, not John Gotti. I told him I didn't want to know the details of his business. All I wanted was money for John. I told him not to approach the boss in any conversations. Just talk to me. Well, of course, just talk to you. Because Gravano's going to steal as much money as he can from the guy, and then he'll just kill him like he does everybody else. 
Have you looked at the indictment in this case? In what case? In this particular case at trial? No. Did you participate in any agreement as far as you're concerned on any plan to import uh, multiple kilograms of heroin? Yes or no? My plan? Did you participate in your view? What was in my mind? I'm asking you yes or no if you can answer that. I can't. You asked me what was in my mind. Uh, I can answer that. Sir, I'll reframe the question. You don't want to hear that? No, I I'm going to give you every opportunity. Did you ask anybody during your career in organized crime to import and possess with the intent to distribute heroin? Did you, sir, yes or no? It's not a yes or no question. <laughs> All right, I take it, sir, that you didn't ask somebody to furnish you with monies that would result from the transportation should it occur of narcotics drugs. Uh, you did. Is that what you're saying? Yes. So he's right here admitting that he, he sold drugs. That he was involved in importation. It's just, it's ridiculous. Like we go up to page two and he says, no, no, I never did that. Now he's admitting it. Uh, and then he, you know, tries to belly up by saying, well, John told me to go there and John specifically told me, uh, oh, well, here you go. Uh, fuck it. I'll read it. Uh, I wanted him to resume what he was doing with Castellano. That's what John told me to go there for. And John specifically told me we're not going in the drug business. We're giving him tacit approval. You're not going in the drug business, but you're giving him tacit approval. It's just ridiculous. Uh, we don't have drug conversations and we don't want to go into the drug business. This is what Grano says. Is it your injection of this drug related conversation as you describe it, an effort by you to prejudice the jury? Repeat that again. Is this injection of this drug related conversation an effort by you to prejudice law enforcement against Patsy Conti? Yes or no? I'm talking basically about the murder of Willie DeBono. As far as drug conversation, why would I look to put that in as far as prejudicing the jury or make it up? I'm not saying that we got drugs and we got money. We dealt it. I'm just telling you that there was a proposal put by John Gotti and myself. Uh, and he just goes on and on. But did Patsy Conti discuss the quantity of drugs? No, I didn't have drug. Can you answer that? Did he discuss with you the quantities of drugs? Yes or no? No, I didn't have the drug conversations, basically. You had no drug conversations when you say basically with Pat Conti. Is that what you're saying? You just said it. We sort of played with uh, each other with words. You played with other with words. Uh, I think you told me that sometimes in the mob, you speak with your eyes or hands. Do you remember saying that? Yeah, of course. What signal should the jury look to? Is the touch of your tie when you're talking to Mr. Conte? As far as drugs? Yes. What's the signal? Are you touching your chin? Are you pulling your ear? Answer, he's going to resume with an awful lot of money that's going to come to John Gotti. Uh, he's going to Italy to put this together. There is something that we know he did with Paul Castellano. I don't bring, I don't think he's bringing olive oil or cans of tomatoes and going to give over millions of dollars for that product. We're talking, uh, we are talking about, obviously, we're talking about drugs. We are near the Ravenite Club and there are bugs. So you're not going to really basically hear, hear it more than likely or see it unless we're up in the apartment direct examination now you testified on direct examination that you had discussions with patsy conti and cheech at the ravenite social club around the time of the san gennaro festival do you remember that yes now with the proceeds from that endeavor what you talked about where would the proceeds go let me skip these pictures i think that may be it guys okay um i forgot to include the next page but he says that all the proceeds went to john Gotti, uh, and there was a lot more questioning uh, there is one or two couple of things I want to bring up really quick. Okay, what you're seeing here, and I can't turn it around, guys. This is a picture from 1988. This is Salvatore Gravano and Gaspipe Gasso. What's interesting about the fact that this was 1988 was Frankie DeChico was killed in 1986. And what a lot of people don't know uh, is that John Gotti uh, was going to un unleash the gauntlet of hell on the Lucchese crime family. He had already told everybody, we're going to war with the Lucchese's. Because they killed Frankie DeChico. Because Gotti knew what was going on. Because he knew him and Angelo had a beef. He understood it. He was going to go to war with the Lucchese's. And he actually ordered the Gambinos to stop working with them for that reason. But yet here in 1988, here's the two drug dealers together. Casso and Gravano, right? Or let's look at this government exhi exhibit. What's the date? 6888 in Brooklyn, New York. You got Vic Amuso and Sammy Gravano meeting together. This coincides with a bunch of drug shipments that came in. So if you are Team Gotti or you're a Gambino crime family member and you are told not to associate with Ukazi guys because you're going to go to war, what the fuck is this? You know, it's just another example of 
uh, Gravano sort of uh, doing what you know he kind of wanted to. Let me look at this one. Uh, let's see. Ah, uh, I this is one I wanted to to highlight. The, these were all of the things that Gravano did under testimony. Okay, he had false testimony. He he uh, principled opposition to drugs and drug dealing when in fact he was drug dealing. Uh, he said that he had not been personally involved when he was. Uh, that he had told the government during his numerous debriefings of all the crimes he had committed during his life. He lied about that. During his plea agreement, he encompassed all of the crimes which he had ever committed and that all crimes were carried out in further uh, furtherance of the enterprise alleged in the indictment. And look at this one. I want you guys to really pay attention to that one. For all these fucking people that are running around going, oh, Gravano was such a big killer. He said he only personally committed one murder to the FBI. And I have those FBI 302s. I meant to put those in. He admitted to killing one. Now we know it's more than one. Okay. We know it's more than one because there's Jewel Cass. Uh, there was his gay lover that he killed. Uh, there's Alan Kaiser that he killed. But I don't think it's much past three or four. And, and listen, three or four makes you a serial killer. I don't care how you warp it. But he only told the feds he only pulled the trigger at one time. Only one time. So all this bullshit bravado that he, he sits on his little fucking throne as the, the remainder of skin has fallen off his decrepit fucking face. He only pulled the trigger once by his own admission. He only pulled the trigger once by his own. Now, he might have ordered 18 others, 19, 20 others, but he only pulled the trigger once. I think we got some other mob rats on here that have killed more people than he has. He only personally committed one murder. <laughs> Let's see. Let me go through this. I think we talked about the Maui murders. I don't want to go through that. I think that's, I think, you know what? Okay, so here you go. There was another motion. Defendants claim that there was newly discovered evidence that Gravano had committed perjury when he testified that he admitted to the prosecution uh, to all the murders he had committed, having concealed. So that means he didn't tell them he killed Pete and Zarello, Eddie Wino, and a person named Harold, whose last name was unknown, and Nikki Carrazzo's son-in-law. The newly discovered evidence was bottomed upon information from unnamed inmate at a federal prison in New Jersey State. Um, so somebody in prison, uh, started giving information that Gravano had killed multiple people and that they knew he had, and the government knew about it and, and didn't, uh, do anything else. Uh, there was evidence that there was newly discovered stuff that the government failed to disclose Gravano's perjury concerning his alleged involvement in narcotics. Oh, there you go. Fucking rat. So the reason why, and we're going to do a part two of this guys, um, but the reason why I wanted to bring this up is, is something very important because a lot of people talk about gas pipe Castle and a lot of people say, oh, and I've heard some a couple of mob content creators say this repeatedly. The gas pipe Castle was shaking people down. He was being a piece of shit in prison. And that's why the feds tore up his paperwork. That's not why they tore up his paperwork. They tore up his paperwork because he started talking and he started telling everybody about Gravano and the drug dealing and all of this stuff. And the FBI did not want that. The FBI did not want anybody knowing anything because here's the problem. If you've got gas pipe Casso starting to come up and say, you know what? Gravano was drug dealing with me and all kinds of stuff. Now you're giving Lucasio, you're giving Gotti uh, an opportunity to say, wait a minute. You know, not that they ever would have used gas pipe in any stretch of the imagination to help them because I don't believe they would have. However, that gives plausible doubt. And like I said at the beginning of this, this does not make, this wouldn't have made or break uh, or broken John Gotti. It really wouldn't have. But what it would have done is it would have at least given the jury a, an opportunity to hear another side of the coin. Uh, because like I said, an indictment's typically a jury, right before they even drop an indictment, they bring jurors in and they listen to all of this nonsense about organized crime and all this kind of bullshit. And the majority of people have no clue what's involved in organized crime. They see Goodfellas, they see The Godfather, and they assume all kinds of crazy shit. Uh, it's not illegal to be a member of the Moose Lodge, the Cub Scouts, the Weeblows, whatever, but, and, and it's not a, a crime to be a member of any kind of group in this country. 
so but yet the government's allowed to weave this mafia bullshit uh history talk uh before uh indictments and cases uh it, it's just it, it's it's for me it's just crazy and we are going to have a part two to this but i just really wanted everybody to see that because it's it's glaringly obvious and the reason why i say that you always have to uh the reason why i say you always have to cross reference right is because one informant may say one thing and oftentimes i don't believe what informants have to say i just got to be honest with you because there's there's no reason for them to be honest because they're going to be given whatever they want anyway so there's there's no impetus for them to be honest because like i said a lot of people don't know they get 25 percent of all assets seized through a rico conspiracy so not only are they going to get paid a half a million fucking dollars, get a new face, new dick implant, whatever the hell they want, new fucking teeth, but they're going to get 25% of whatever assets the government can seize. So if they take a guy's house and it's worth $5 million, they're getting 25% of that tax-free. So there's an incentive to lie and to make up more and more because the more motherfuckers you can put in, the wealthier you're going to get. Now, I guarantee you, if they took a rat and they said, listen, nothing personal, we're not going to pay you. But what we are going to do is we'll reduce your sentence by three years. And if you told them you're not going to make millions of dollars and you're still going to do 20 years in prison, you'd see a lot of guys stop talking real quick because that's what it is. It's a fucking money grab, whether or not you know it. Yes, Sammy had sex with his brother. Oh, absolutely. The, the, the gay bartender that was killed in Brooklyn was having sexual relations with both of them, with both of them. Uh, and the argument with Nick Scabetta was, A, Sammy wanted his plaster business. That's number one. And number two, Scabetta threatened to go tell the Gambinos that Sammy was a Peter Puffer, that he was homosexual. And that's why he's killed. Had no other reason. People say, oh, he was a cokehead and he was saying all this crazy shit. That's not true. That's not true. Uh, and 90%, uh, and 90 of the cases that you look at, especially with Gravano, he didn't, this isn't a guy that was born and so fucking smart that he was able to like scheme his way. He schemed his way. Don't get me wrong, but everything he did was through lies and murder. The fact that he killed a 16 year old and he, it's so convenient for who he blames because he blames dead people for that. He blames dead people. But what's funny is that's the one show that he did when he talked about Alan Kaiser and lied and said, Alan Kaiser ran towards the car. Uh, how do you get shot in the back of the fucking head when you're running forward? That eh, kind of doesn't make any sense to me. But the reason why he doesn't monetize that show is because he knows if he does, that Joy and her family and everybody else is going to sue the fuck out of him. Son of Sam Wa. So, you know, um, what? It's not Sammy, but John running his mouth for give Sammy the bull. You're a piece of shit. And you belong in hell. That's where you fucking believe. You know, you know why? Plus, he killed a 16-year-old kid. And you name me one other fucking boss that never got fucking caught talking on a wiretap. You're not going to say that about Tony Ducks Corallo, are you? Go fuck yourself, these pinheaded idiots. Uh, this is my point. They, it's amazing to me. If you don't like John Gotti, that's okay by me. But he did nothing. He did nothing that nobody before him ever did. Anastasia killed the boss. Gambino killed the fucking boss. Luciano killed two bosses. John Gotti killed the boss. Do I need to keep going? Why are the rules different for John Gotti? They shouldn't be because everybody schemes. Everybody does. That life is kill or be killed. And it's amazing to me how people just, they see fucking black and white with everything. Like, open your eyes. Oh, it's okay. Luciano killed two guys. Nope, that's fine. Oh. That's fine. Oh, Tony Ducks Corallo buried the whole fucking commission with his goddamn mouth in his Jaguar. But nobody says nobody says a word. Then they want to refer to John Gotti talking on the tape. It, to me, it's 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 fucking asinine. It's asinine. You it, there are tapes of Sammy Gravano talking. He says there isn't, but there are. I've seen I have transcripts. So at the end of the day, you, 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 you cannot continue. You cannot continue to like blame one guy and, and, and not hold them all accountable for the same fucking standards. No, he wasn't. That is a hundred percent. Not true. Alan was a 16 year old kid. That's your problem. 
You believe fucking rats. That's your problem. Get rid, get rid of anybody that comes in here and tries to fucking say anything about Alan Kaiser, please. Why don't you go suck Sammy's dick, you rat lover? Because that's what you are. That's what you are. You're a fucking a, a, a fucking rat lover. Go hang out on a rat loving station. This is a non rat station. One of the only ones there is. Because about everybody else puts every fucking rat known to man on their show or has. That's their choice. I make mine. Thanks, Chris. Anyway, sorry about yelling, but I get passionate about it because people want to cherry pick. People want to cherry pick like this hierarchy, this imagined hierarchy these people have of rats. There's no such thing as a hierarchy. A rat is a rat is a rat. They're all liars. They're all rats. Anybody that says, oh, well, he's not as bad a rat is an idiot. They're all fucking rats. Even a rat, even an informant will tell you a rat is a rat is a rat. They'll even tell you anybody that rats is just a rat. There's no difference. There are higher valued rats in terms of the government. Sure. But just because a rat doesn't come on and talk shit about people does not make him any less of a piece of shit and a fucking rat. Just my, just, I mean, I think most people would tell you that. You know, I just get tired of it. I just get tired of it. You know, people don't, people don't want to be honest about shit, but they want to, they want to curtail and, and sort of cherry pick who they're going to talk about and who they're going to bury and say they don't like. And it's okay. You're entitled not to like somebody. But tell the facts, and that's the problem. A lot of people don't know what the facts are, or they get mad at people and just want to invent shit about people. And no, listen, nobody's saying that any of these men are saints. Nobody is saying that these men are perfect and did nothing wrong. Quite the contrary. However, no man should ever go to the prison on the words of another man, especially when that other man has everything to gain by telling on everybody. Because in most cases, look at their files. Most of these rats did more violent, disturbing shit than the men they're fucking testifying against. And that's just the truth. You know, uh, you know, if, if you do the crime, you do the time. Absolutely. 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 Uh, if you call someone your brother, turn around and put them in life for prison, piece of shit. Yeah, abs absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, and that's the thing, you know, if you just call it up and down the middle, it, it is what it is. And this is, I've never seen a truer statement. Depends on how bad the government wants you with the facts aren't there. They will create some, they will tailor, they will tailor, tailor, tailor testimony every single time. And listen, what you're never going to hear me say is that Sammy Gravano wasn't a gangster. I'm never going to say that he was, and he was a successful gangster, but it wasn't because he was smart and all this other shit. You know, a lot of it was just schemey shit. You know, they all they all do that. Everybody schemes. Um, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I don't expect anybody to uh, sort of uh, take my stance on anything. But the reason why I wanted to come on here tonight was just to just level it a little bit. Uh, the Sammy Gravano documentary that we are doing is coming. Um, but I'm just waiting on one thing and then we're good to go. Um the best is the lie when Sammy said he made Nikki Scarf for the boss by killing Johnny Keys. Yeah, it's bullshit. Everybody knows who put fucking Nikki Scarf in charge. That was Vinny Gigante. He had tried to put in Vinny Gigante before fucking Chicken Man Testa, but Scarf says, no, 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 he's the rightful guy. Let him go. But I think it's because Nikki knew there was still shit on the streets. It's bullshit. I don't believe that meeting ever took place. Yeah, I went to South Philadelphia and I jerked Nikki, Nikki Scarf off. Come on. He's full of shit. Sammy is a pathological liar and makes stories up on the dead because they're not here to defend themselves and even blame Louie Molito for killing Alan just shows you what a weasel he is. Well, of course, it's very convenient, JL. It's very convenient to blame somebody that can't defend themselves. But 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 listen, in, in, in the majority of these cases, with Gravano's murders, ask his daughters who took over that business the minute their father disappeared. You know? Who took over those businesses? That should tell you everything. Uh, my favorite, my favorite is the story he tells about why he's called Sammy the Bull. 
Oh, I had a bike. Look at him. He's like a little bull. You know, that's a bullshit story, right? Look at the bull's head Staten Island. That's where he got the nickname. Not because he was a little tough guy fighter. You know, he's full of shit. He's full of shit. And it's funny because I was the first one to come out and tell you that Gravano was a little flighty in the, in the shorts. And it's funny because somebody messages me the other day says, holy shit, Mikey Scars DiLonardo said that Sammy uh, had a prick in his mouth. I said, I said, yeah, I know. He goes, you were the first to say it. I said, I know, but nobody believes me. You know, they think I just invent this shit. You know, <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Uh, but you notice, and, 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 and here's the truth. Here's the truth. If you look at the pushback that is coming for Sammy Gravano, he doesn't like it. He doesn't like it at all. In fact, the reason why the, the documentary was stalled was because this prick got his lawyer after me because they were afraid I was going to bring up the Alan Kaiser thing and some other things. Because I have stuff that I just won't even say on here because it's just too good. It's too good. All the stuff I, I, I said tonight is truthful. It's honest. And you can find that information yourself. But I got some stuff nobody's going to believe. But I'm not going to do that on here like that because um, then people are going to steal it. And then I'm just not going to let them do it. Uh, and you're right. That is no secret. If if you know anybody, they'll tell you. They'll tell you. And that's been around for a very long time. That's nothing new. Uh, but it just seems like, once again, it, it comes down to people only reveal what they want. If they like an informant, they're not going to tell you the seedier your shit. Like, they beat women. Oh, they're going to forget about that. They're not going to mention that. But yet, they'll publicly say... On another show, I hate anybody that puts their hands on a fucking woman. They ought to be killed. Motherfucker, you're a platforming a guy who did that. So that's my point is it only seems to apply to people when you like them or not like them. And I don't like any informant. That's just the bottom line. And I don't even know how many there are now. Because uh, there's, you know, when I came to YouTube, there was one. And I handled that pretty quick. You know, and then another one would come and I'd handle that pretty quick. Using paperwork is a brilliant thing because you can call them on their recollection of things, which is always funny to do because you can get Sammy on that any day of the week, his recollections. Guy can recollect what a cock pump looks like, but he can't recollect the murder. He, he, seriously? <sighs> so, you know, uh, it is what it is. It is what it is. Uh, when did Scar say that? Uh, when did Scar say, I think it was like, I don't listen to Mikey Scar. Somebody just told me he said it uh, because I just won't listen to anything he has to say. Um, you believe Scar is more than sincere than Sammy. I would. Okay. So I will say this. I, I think that Mikey's more sincere, but he's still a fucking uh, rat. He's still a piece of shit. I don't care how eloquent a motherfucker is. When you try to give somebody the death penalty, when you rat people out, you are a bottomless pit of shit. And I'm not going to believe anything you have to say. And that's just my two cents. I don't expect everybody to, to follow that logic. I think people know where I stand. I've been pretty, uh, pretty, pretty obvious about uh, where I stand on that because I just don't believe that you should go to jail based on the words of somebody else who's going to get absolution for their crimes. It's bullshit. It's nonsense. Absolutely. Chris, you want to come on? Mr. Gorky? Gorky Park? But, you know, it's like anything else. I mean, somebody used to say to me, oh, who's more believable, this rat or that rat? None of them. None of them more. And I'll offer you proof of that. You want proof that they all lie? Just go watch their YouTube videos. Watch how their stories change. 28 to 7. 28 to 7. So if you put money on the game tonight, you're going to win. The Eagles are going to win this game. I talked to somebody early today, and they says, oh, what do you got on the Eagles? I says, you know what? I said, going to win by like three or four touchdowns if Hertz plays well in the first half. If he doesn't, it's going to be close. So let's just pray to God that this ends the right fucking way. Um, 
anyway, I, I'm not getting offline. I just wanted to thank you guys for putting up with um, sort of the information. Uh, I know I can be a little fucking obnoxious about stuff, but I just believe in what I believe in. And, you know, if you guys, if anybody in here, listen, if anybody in here likes to watch the the rat stuff, I got no problem with you. If you like uh, content creators that did, that, um, that did do that kind of stuff and in interview informants, that's fine too. Uh, I don't even hate guys who interview them uh, because I think that, you know, it, it, it's entertainment and people like it. Uh, I just make the choice not to. And that's just me. Uh, you know, oh God. <laughs> we need to tape a Ralph Natale singing that. Fry, he, was fry. he doesn't have any teeth, that fucking guy. I heard a guy, I heard a guy, I had a guy, I heard a, a bunch of good stories about Ralphie from some guys down there. He was not, he was not well liked. Uh, but they said they all universally said one thing about Ralph is that he was the best bullshitter they had ever seen. Cause he would, he would literally be sitting in a bar and he would be telling a story and he would, it, it, and the way this guy explained it to me was, Hey, this guy, you know, Jeff, you see how this wall show, that motherfucker would sit there and tell you it was green, tell you a story about how the green was manufactured, who painted it, why it was there. The reason why they used that paint and by the end of the fucking story, you'd believe it because he was that good, but he was full of shit, you know? Uh, but like I said, you, here's what I encourage. You know, when a lot of people say to me, um, was Ralph even made? I see, to my knowledge, he wasn't. To my knowledge, he wasn't. Uh, but, you know, it, that's that's opening a whole gamut of, of, of things. Uh, I love it when you spew facts. Thank you. Well, that's the thing. I, I'm not, Listen, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. Uh, a lot of people disagree with the way I do stuff. Uh, but here's my thing, right? So let's, 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 let me, let me address this because I think this is a good question. Uh, if you're going to be honest with your audience, right? If you're going to be honest about not having a side, not feeling any kind of way, I've told you from day one, I hate fucking rats. Okay. Uh, and I think you all know that. However, when you have people that will get a big interview, uh, and, and unfortunately I'm going to defend the do for a minute on this one. I don't want to do it, but I will. Uh, anytime you bring on somebody like Sammy Gravano, you can't ask him tough questions. You're lucky enough. He even went on your show anyway. Okay. That's number one. Number two, a lot of money was paid by Barstool to Sammy Gravano to do that interview. If Jeff Nadu comes out in the first minute and goes, so you killed Alan Kaiser. Would you like to talk about that? What I'm going to see is a, uh, it says your device is not connected, Chris. Um, if he comes out the gate with that, Sammy's just going to leave. So I don't fault Jeff Nadu for asking that particular question because that's that's a nasty one. But the reality is this, guys. You can't ask an informant a tough question because when you do, what do they do? They call your mother a whore. They, they just start making up lies, saying you rape people. This is what they do. They can't. You can't ask them tough questions because they're not going to answer them. And so a lot of these questions you see always tailors around to the stories they invent like, how big and powerful they were when in 95% of the case, these guys you see on YouTube were nobodies were zeros. They were absolute nobodies. They're forgettable, but they want to be remembered, but they don't want to be remembered for being a rat. So they invent bullshit stories like the Tommy karate bullshit. Uh, and that's just what they do. That's just what they do. Uh, let's see. Jeff Nadu steals your ideas. Yeah, he definitely does, but that's okay. You know, that's his choice. Um, uh, let's see No, just try again, Chris, just try again. Uh, there's no point in asking Sammy to be a certain, well, no. And that's the thing. You can't really dog to do for not asking a tough question because he's going to lose Sammy, but he could have snuck one in like, Hey, you look ugly rat fuck. How's your wife or, or, or how, how, How's everybody doing since they all got a prison for selling meth or whatever the case may be? But he just basically said nothing. But he seemed to take a lot of joy in in, in Gravano saying ugly things about Gotti, which I found to be. But he seemed to take a lot of joy in, in, in even, Gravano saying ugly things about Gotti, which I found. To be, Are you eating sunflower seeds? He, eating sunflower seeds? Can you hear me? You take a lot of joy in. in <laughs> hey, do you know you're on the show? Yeah, I'm here. You hear me? Yeah, now I can hear you. <laughs> Those eagles, huh? Oh, 
I don't know what I'm doing with this thing. It, it's weird. I didn't change a thing or touch this thing from the last time, and all of a sudden it wouldn't connect. Nothing worked. I guess it's all right now. No, it does that sometimes. Every time I use this fucking thing, I got to, uh, you know, um, yeah, Stax, Stax brings up a really good point. He's, he goes, Sammy will never come on my show. No, because Stax will give it to him. Say what you want about Stax, but he doesn't play fucking games. He gets right to the fucking point. Uh, and that's the thing. Sammy's only going to go on shows where he, you know, he so thinks you, he thinks the host is, a, is a fucking tonight, mark. Cool. Do what? I, I said you buried Sammy tonight, good man. Nobody knows all that paperwork of all that other info you had. I mean, there's so many people that just, that came forward saying about his connections with drugs and connections with Castle. I mean, you had uh, many people on here about his homosexuality. I mean, he's he doesn't stand a chance, man, with you. Once that truth comes out about him, he ain't going to know what to do. Well, the thing is, I did nothing. I just did research. That's all I did. And anybody well, could that, that, I mean, that's what I mean. I'm, yeah. He did it to himself, his own words. But see, people are just so lazy that, that they don't want to take the time to just look at 3,000 documents and then cross-reference them. And I get it. A lot of people, they just want their fucking money and they want to go, fuck you, your mother, and run and, and, and let that be the show. Where they want to <laughs> like read an article while they're talking to their own audience and then get money off an article that's somebody else's work. You know, and that that's yeah, my whole point. What, what I do is a little different. Yeah, I mean, you're original, 100% non-rats. You do more research than anyone else. I mean, you, you're you the OG of it all. Look at Agnostic. The retarded monk was getting aroused by someone. Oh, get him in here, man. He was funny <laughs> as shit last time, man. Well, he I'm only going to... I'm only going to go on for another half an hour because I am not doing another three and a half hour yeah, marathon. Yeah, we, There's know, just no that. way. It was a good show tonight. I still keep laughing of, at uh, Agnostic from last week when you're doing the trivia and you said, this is better than trying to listen to Jimmy Calandria speak English. <laughs> 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 that was so funny, man. Oh, that this guy. funny, dude. You know, it, it's amazing to me that, like, okay, so there's, there's informants that, like, stretch the truth. Then there's guys that completely, like, just invent shit you've never heard of. And then yeah. when they get busted – their way of trying to get around it is being like, oh, I knew it was a joke. I'm just fucking with people. No, you just got caught. Yeah. He, well, I mean, think about it. What else could they say? Like, you're talking about that phony picture where he said he was with Tommy Karate in jail. He wasn't. He was proven it wasn't. So what's his escape? I mean, he can't go with the lie anymore. So he just has to, like, play it off. Or, yeah, I was just screwing with you guys. You know, I it was just a joke. No, it wasn't. You were trying to fool people, and you did it. Hey, thanks, Stax. I appreciate it. Stax, you can come on anytime you want, buddy. You're always welcome here. Yeah, well, people forget I know Tommy Karate. I was the first one to put out yeah. the letter where he denied another guy's fucking wild claims. And and what's funny about that is there were people that used that letter without my permission. And they're like, oh, how do we know that that letter was even to him? It's like, because my fucking thumb is <laughs> on the bottom of it, you asshole. <laughs> like, and they're like, you know, he should show the envelope. Yeah, so I could show everybody my address. Yeah, okay. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> they're just haters you know and tommy's a funny guys. guy man he's a real funny guy oh, he told he me is. he uh he said i never heard of this guy in my life he goes do me a favor he goes write me more stories i need a good laugh I remember. yeah yeah that's funny try showing him around there all his other other inmate that's hilarious man oh look at this we got a creative one sammy lies about his fucking mom with a steel dildo after mikey scar sends him to do a pick of gene Gotti when he got out oh god this guy's listening to you too much. The steel dildos. 162 tr strong tonight. Great job, MTR. We have a huge Eagles game on. I know Boardwalk guy. I wish I was there with you. Oh, they're killing the man. 28 to seven. They just got to keep going. They got to keep going. Uh, the I you don't you, you don't know who Boardwalk guy is, but I think I might have told you who he is before. But don't say it here. No, I don't. I you hinted around. I didn't. But you know what? Last uh, the last live boardwalk I when I was on, I I didn't see it till after the words in the chat. He asked me if the Woodlands is still open in Old Forge. Yes, the Woodlands is still open. It's not in Old Forge though. It's in Wilkesbury. Old Forge is it's not that far, like fifteen minutes away. But yeah, the Woodlands that's a nightclub that uh is open around here. Oh. Well, they you used know what to I'm, more I, yeah. alcohol than any other nightclub in Pennsylvania for the longest time. Not anymore, but it was uh, 
you know, it's going to be funny now. Right. So I really made a conscious effort this evening to like, be honest, be straight up about what the facts are. And, and sure you can take, I know what's going to come next. And I know what people are going to say. Well, the one thing that he didn't mention was that John Gotti may or may not have taken money from drug proceeds. Do people realize there is a monster difference from standing on the corner selling a kilo of Coke versus like not knowing where money comes from? If that's the case, every fucking boss in Cosa Nostra history ought to be on uh, on death row. Yeah, I mean, of course there is. I mean, that guy had probably money being kicked up from every which way. I mean, it was just, you know, another kick up probably. Listen, they right had at one the point, team. they had at one point something like almost 30 captains. Mm-hmm. That should tell you the enormity of that family. You figure yeah. 10, 15, 20 guys under each guy. Like yeah. that's a ton of fucking money. Well, so, yeah, like, fucking do you really think, do you think, do you think John sitting at a Sunday at a restaurant is going to be like, all right. So uh, the take this week was X, Y, Z. How much of that came from Coke? <laughs> yeah, right. You're, you're, you're handing me and that. If I'm getting regular envelopes of, of, of thousands of dollars, hundreds of thousands of dollars, whatever it is, uh, I'm not going to always ask where it came from. Thank you. Good job. Keep and going. I tell you where there wasn't drugs, Howard Beach. I tell no. you where there wasn't drugs. <laughs> you know, you that's going? that's the other that's the other misconception. You know, is yeah, that these guys don't take care of their families. You, you know, know what? Yeah, I agnostic. Found- I got your email, buddy. I got it. Agnostic, you should come on. He was a funny dude, man. I like. Listening. I'm afraid he's going to tell me more ghost stories. Oh God, he was. Funny, I will man. know. Let me answer this, Dover Dan. I'm going to be able to answer this 100 percent next week. I just can't right now because I'm just waiting on one thing. But Gravano tried to put a stop to it. We got a bunch of notices from his attorney, and and it was funny because my attorney said, "You know, how bad do you want to get into a legal tangle with this guy?" I said, "Well." If he t- if he takes to the point where there's a deposition, I can ask him anything I want, and I'd love to have an hour long conversation oh about all the God. cock that's been in his mouth. Yeah, imagine that. <laughs> <That's>, yeah. <laughs> and he's not going to be willing to sit for that. So you yeah. know, so me and my lawyer are like, you know what, just fuck it, just rail him because nothing nothing I'm saying is if it's my opinion, I'll tell you so. But if it's a fact. You can't argue that it's not slander if it's a fact. No, no, it's no. not defamation. It's not slander. I mean, it's it is what it is, and it's like you said. You know, like dead man can't defend themselves. Everything Sammy says about all these guys he killed, whatever. Do you think they at all? If they were alive today, they would just sit there and say, "Yeah, he he's right. That's what happened. I was wrong. He was right." You know, I mean, it's they can't defend themselves. Listen, so he that, can spin the narrative however he wants. I totally get that. You know. Gravano is who he is, but I want to make a really, really valid point here. We are still talking about a man who's been dead since 2002. Yeah. Still people are hashtagging that name. It's since 2002. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And realistically, like, and I've said this before, like in, in, in real life, you know, Al Capone was only a boss for five years. Gotti, same kind of deal, but what people don't know about Gotti is when Neil Delacroche was put sort of, you know, Paul says, all right, Neil, you're you're the you're gonna be the second. I want you to just take care of all the blue collar shit that's going on in the streets. Right. Well, Neil can't cover 30 captains, so who does he bring in to cover some of it for him? But John yeah. Gotti. Yeah. So John Gotti really, when people say, Oh, he had no clue what he was doing, he didn't know how to run the streets. John Gotti was running the streets since the 70s. Yeah, he was in a leadership position for Absolutely. a long time. Absolutely. Even, even though it wasn't the label or title of a boss, he was still in a leadership position for a long right. time in that life. And, and we're still talking about him because he's the image of what people think about when they think of, of, of organized crime. Yeah. Uh, and he always will be. I mean, he was handsome. That kind of helps. He dressed fantastic. But what yeah. I think what I think the real moniker of it is, is he told the government, go fuck yourself every day and give a shit. Didn't and give that's a shit what, what they thought. Are. I am who I am. I'm going to pay for my sins, whatever. You know, how many other people can say they've done that? Not many. I'm not saying he was like the greatest boss ever, but. Not to the degree, to the degree he did. I mean, he gave the the finger to the the government daily. Right. And people can't separate the myth from the actual man himself. And that's a huge problem. Yeah. They see him as a criminal element, just that and the third. But what they don't see is the father, the grandfather, yeah. the uncle, 
and the nephew because you know as well as I do. This is a these guys are multifaceted. Who they are with their boys is one way. Who they are at home is totally different. Right. And I don't and that's probably why are, Angel has her show to show that side of her father that like, you know, people might not realize, you know. Well, I think that gets, you know, unfortunately it gets lost in translation sometimes. And, you know, I, I don't think and and listen, I, I don't really want to, you know, speak, you know, say Angel's name or anything or whatever, but you know, I think people forget that was her dad. Right. Regardless of whether you like her or not, that was her dad. Yeah, and I mean it's only natural you're gonna stick up for your you absolutely know, you know, just mean, like I would, just like you would. Uh, yeah, um, everybody would. It's you know, but they course, can't yeah. make the distinction between gangster and father, right? Yeah, no, and, and, that's, and that's, that's you know, it, it is what it is, but you know, nobody nobody knows that guy like her. You know what I mean? Well, I, I could be well, an absolutely. expert, I don't know a quarter of what he was really like. Sure, of course, yeah, uh, uh, of course not. You know what I found interesting about a month or so back when you put out the top seven wealthiest gangsters of all time? I thought guys like uh, Tony Salerno would be a little higher, but those I, I don't remember the list, but I, the first couple of guys that were back in the 20s and shit, I guess was that you were taking into account inflation of what yes. the money would be today. Yes. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. God, that's fucking crazy how much money they made. Yeah, I, I took inflation. And then even like for Salerno, I took inflation from like 84 right. and inflated it. But he was like he was like eight on the list and he was worth a billion dollars. all well, by Yeah, himself. that's why I was saying I was a little surprised at the list. I thought he would, like he, he would have been a little higher. And uh, I, I don't even remember who, who was one, two or whatever. I know my I just thought of Meyer Lansky and Salerno. But I think just, Luciano, Luciano was one. Meyer Lansky yeah. was like three or four because i think that costello and siegel were like at the top of that list too yeah god i would have thought benny siegel either oh a lot of money man a lot of money hey oh, but I'm, really in, I'm gonna win tonight a couple of bucks what do you think i'm gonna do with my money later on do you really want me to say that no i don't of course not man <laughs> I, I really don't think you want me to say <laughs> no of course not i don't want you to say that <laughs> I think yeah. you're going to buy an <laughs> ounce of onions and snort it. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to think of something witty, but everything I think of is dirty. So I wasn't even just going to go there, you know? No, that's all right. You get, uh, you're good with the one liners. When are you uh, getting back? 125 tonight? Yeah. Well, I, I won earlier with the, uh, fu the fucking Chiefs. I'm winning tonight. Oh, they pulled it off even after Mahomes. Got hurt. Yeah, well, he came back in the second half. I mean, he wasn't quite a hundred percent, but they uh the Jags quarterback threw a couple interceptions in the end, or I would have been fucked. But right now I got the Eagles, they're slaughtering them, and I just I took a live bet at halftime with the Giants plus 27 and a half because you know the Eagles would take their foot off the gas. So right now I'm looking good, but I don't know. I mean, Eagles are driving here, so I don't know. Either way, I won tonight, so you know, I mean. What in the a couple fuck? people are going to be happy besides me? I got some weird video from somebody I don't know. What the? F what oh my your phone? God, the fuck? I have no idea. I don't even know the number. It came up. Uh, you know, the other day I got a number from Israel and I stupidly picked up the phone. Oh, God. Israel. And so, like, I thought it was like, you know how sometimes people call, uh, you know, telemarketers, whatever. Yeah. It was like a fucking spectrum person calling from Tel Aviv. Like, oh, wow. dude, would you like to upgrade to our newest modem? Like, you're calling me from Israel? Like, you can't call me from, like, well, I guess they call from Bangladesh, too. Yeah, no, uh, well, probably cheaper. I, I can't. You can't trust fucking anybody. I, I, we have been getting calls. I've been getting calls, I think, for the past five years. They're all from India. They're all nothing against Indian people. I'm sure they're nice people. No, but they're constantly. I mean, everybody says Russian scammers, middies. I everyone from India. My dad has been retired for about 15 years. And the and, and last year he got attacked and, and he didn't work for an electric company or anything like that. And last year he got a tax form. 
that said my father's name, uh, Nevin Gorky Electric, and it showed his earnings. Somebody had it with my mom's social security number on it. So somehow my dad made uh, a couple thousand dollars. I got to rep- for- reply to my cousin here. Yeah, go ahead, man. Um, so here's the deal. Everything that we talked about, uh, Chris Trock, is accurate. Everything you were right on. I didn't get back to you because there's – I don't want to say it publicly. There's a reason why I didn't get back to you, just family stuff, but everything we kind of talked about, she knew everybody. So the way I figure it, Chris, is we're like third cousins because he's, see, for those that don't know, he's related to people I'm related to. So that makes us cousins. Uh, I didn't even know that. But once I started talking to my relatives and stuff, they all knew his side of the family. So, uh, cause we have the same cousin that was uh, kind of a notorious guy in Providence. So. There you have it. But Chris, I'll get back to it in an email. I'm sorry I haven't, man. I've just been uh, so busy. Yeah. Uh, Chris Trock's a great guy. Third cousin's got to be. There's no way around it. We know, we know. It's funny when you talk to a guy, right? And he says, oh, you know, Federal Hill, this and this. And then he like starts talking and he's talking about your uncle. <laughs> and you're like, wait yeah. a minute. That's my uncle. He's like, oh, well, you know, so it, it's, yeah, we're we're related. I don't know exactly how. Um, but it's probably by marriage, I would think, but we're definitely related for sure. Uh, but yeah, it was funny because we was, we were talking on an email and he's like, oh yeah, do you know this one? I was like, oh yeah. What about this one? And what about that one going on? So for all these people that want to tell me I was born in Virginia beach, like, how is it, how is it? I know everything about Providence and related to people in Providence. So stupid. Just more haters, man. It's what's the score score still the same. Yeah, twenty eight seven. There's, I don't know. I, I, I it's, a, it's a commercial right now, uh, but they're, they're kicking the shit out of them. Uh, yeah, Chris Truck. I was actually, I almost came up to Providence because people that live next to me on uh, ninety one Modena Avenue, which may sound familiar to you, uh, it's just down a couple of streets down from Smith Street. Uh, my neighbors on 91 Modena Avenue growing up down there, uh, their mother died. I was going to head up to to Warwick. Uh, they they moved from the house a couple of years ago, but uh, I was going to come up, but I just I didn't. But, uh, you know, let's see. This is, hey, if you're a lab, you're my cousin. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know that, Chris. We We have too many things in common. We've talked about it. Now, everybody knows, biologically speaking, my deal. Uh, And he knows because I told him off the record. But yeah, absolutely, Chris. I don't know what more I could do to prove it. But yeah, we're definitely cousins. Agnostic said it's okay. I'm from Nebraska. Uh, How big is my family? There's uh, seven, eight. Wait, there was nine children in my mother's side of the family. And uh, no, Jesus. Did I say nine? I meant eight. One died. So technically seven. Uh, and I have like 32 first cousins, 33 first cousins. Cause everybody, you know, Catholics, you know, make babies. Uh, and I probably have 70 second cousins and probably over 150 third cousins. Chris truck, Chris truck. I'll tell you, we, my whole family and th- th- his family ran Providence. It's just how it went. Um, but yeah, I have a, a humongous family, humongous. Uh, let's see how much. How much have you spent over the years for paperwork? Let me tell you something. Pacer is 10 cents a fucking page. Do you want to know what my bill was last month? $2,600 fucking dollars. $2,600 for paperwork. $2,600. Holy fuck. That was, that was the most expensive. The cheapest was like six, 670 There's not a mob to a dude on this show for the ones that do mob content still, which is rare. That would spend twenty six hundred dollars in ten years to try to get it right, and you do it in one month to bring to get it as accurate as you could. Well, the thing is, is like, okay, so you have books, right? And we can all agree books are entertaining, and books do sure. have some credible information. Okay, you have books, but that's always an author's representation of the events because they always have sort of a narration, like George Anastasia, my my lesbian lover that he is. Uh, is pro fed just like that shit bag Dave Schratweiser is pro fed. Uh, so you're going to get a narrative out of them. So you have the books, then you have Pacer and court documents, then you have 302s, then you have case files, and you kind of got it like when you look at somebody like Sam Giancana. Okay, you because and here's a great thing, and my Providence people will love this 
if you look in Sam Giancana's the, the government paperwork on Sam Giancana and their surveillance reports, do you know that in his surveillance reports there's no mention of Ray Patriarca whatsoever? None. However, if you look at Ray Patriarca's, you see that he met Sam Giancana here in, in New York City multiple times, right around the Kennedy thing. <laughs> wow. So because they followed him. So it's just it's interesting. And so then what I do from there. Because you have Patriarcha and then you have Giancana, then when you got to think to yourself, okay, well, who in New York else might have been at that meeting? Maybe it was Carlo Gambino. So you go to whatever the government has on him. And right. then if you see the Patriarcha comes up on that, then you can kind of start to see what's accurate and what's not. If it's just on one, I tend not to believe it. But if I can cross-reference to 10 other people, bing, you got it. You know what I mean? That's That's typically how I do it. Well, it's, you know, you're easy you to say you try to get the most accurate. I mean, I mean, it makes sense. It makes, uh, I can't wait for that Kennedy show. You know, what book I don't know how accurate it would be, but I think would be pretty, uh, pretty good because he's involved with so much shit is, is, uh, Handsome Johnny about Johnny Roselli. It's, you know what it is? It, it's, here's the thing with the Kennedy thing because everybody, you know, I love it when people go, oh, you've been talking about this for a fucking year. Do, do people realize? Like oh, what that is, what that actually entails. That that might be the most research you ever have to do in the most shows. That's Would that be the biggest show you months. ever did yet? Well, and I may know some people. You know what right. I mean? And sure. and people, when you get to know people, people have to be comfortable with you. Right. You know. Um. And and you know, it, it's a tough thing because you want to be fair. You know. And, and and this is what I mean about bias when I say bias. And I meant to say this earlier, and I kind of fucked it up. But the thing is, is that. You can't be biased. I will give you guys side A of the paper. I'll give you side B of the paper, right? Then I will give you what my opinion is. My opinion doesn't really matter at the end right. of the day. If you like me, it'll matter because you'll agree with me. But if you hate if you hate me, you're really going to be like, ah, fuck this miserable fuck. That's going to be your opinion. But if you don't give two sides of the coin, what are you really doing? What is your position? If if you come onto a video and say John Gotti probably was involved or might have been involved, it may be interesting if John Gotti was involved in whacking Frankie to Chico. How about that? Why would you even say that? It's A, not in the realm of possibility. B, you're just trying to start shit with people. Yeah, he's just throwing the pot. because Right. And C, what is your factual basis for that information? That's the question I ask of everybody. What is your factual basis for information? And you know what 90% of them say to me? Because rats told me. Because an informant oh, yeah. said it's, so. That's yeah. just that's not enough for me. No, because you've just, proven how much they've lied in the past. You know what I mean? It's you still prove that they lied. Well, that's my thing. It's like you know everybody wants to to get paid, and I, I listen. I get it, but listen, if, if I'm, I'm not getting rich doing this, you know. But it's like I try to do due diligence, like I did at the top of the show. I don't know if you was watching, but I admitted I got something wrong. How many of these people do that? Not many, not many. I, I came in a little late. I was uh, in the bathroom. I was a few minutes late, but I did hear you mention something about getting something wrong. Yeah. I mean, listen, when I get it wrong, I'll tell you I got it wrong, and it happens. You can't always be right. And I also see this. Just because I say so doesn't make it so because that's my opinion. Listen, I get questions all the time every week on my show when we do the Q&A over on, the, uh, over on our uh, podcast, Facebook. Yeah, which here's the link down there. And the one thing is a lot of the questions I get are geared toward, towards, do you know if A, like this person and that person will, and, and sometimes I laugh and say, motherfucker, yeah. how could I know that? I wasn't there. Yeah, right, right. Now I can, I can surmise based on a belief I might have, uh, but it, it's tough. Nobody's ever going to get everything right 100% of the time. It just doesn't well, you can't. So many people involved about things, so many different things that happened such a long time ago. It's going to be, you know. And agnostic is right. Gas did admit, uh, wait, didn't Gas admit to it for his 302s? He did. He absolutely did. What what was that meeting about um, that they, they called Little Appalachian or whatever that was in New York City? There... Are you talking about the one where Gambino got pinched? I think so, where a lot of other mob guys were there. Right, I don't know the restaurant. Buffalo, Marcello. Yeah, I forget the name of the restaurant. Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was it. That was the one. Um, a lot of it was just stuff with Vegas, to be honest with you. 
uh, there, I, I, a lot of people don't know this, but there was an issue that that Patriarcha at one point Patriarcha wanted to kill Sam Giancana, and a Where lot of that was because Giancana felt like Chicago was his, and Gian or excuse me, Las Vegas, and Giancana was just a front boss. A lot of people don't realize that, right? You know, he did a Cardo in Enrique's bidding, but right. his 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 pants got a little too big for his legs. You know what I mean? Yeah. And Patriarcha had a lot of business with Traficante in the Caribbean with Lansky and other places. And when he found out that, and I guess it was because uh, Giancana had talked to Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin, and he had found out that Frank Sinatra was holding the ownership stakes in the sands uh, in the, uh, Oh God, what's the other one? Oh, the dunes that Patriarca owned like a 30% interest in those casinos, but Sinatra held them legally in his name. And when Giancana found that out, he was irate and wanted to try to fuck Patriarca out of those shares and was trying to get Frank to just give them to him. Patriarca finds out and it just got very ugly very, very quickly. Why did G why would G and Connick care that he had him? Because he, he because because he felt that Las Vegas was his. And he thought I think that he could push around Sinatra and, and, and Dean Martin and some of those guys, but Dean Martin was crafty. You know, Dean just basically told him to go fuck himself. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna do nothing to me, Pally, you know? Yeah. Jesus uh, Christ, man! It, it's 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 insane. It's it's insane. Uh, you would have to be there to know everything. Absolutely. Uh, truth is, your opinion makes damn sense. Uh, yeah, if that it would be your truth, sure. But I think anytime you know, this is listen. This is this is why people won't come on here and, and debate with me. Not that I would encourage that because there's nothing more insulting than two people that just call each other fucking names because that's what it gets reduced to. Because the minute that you give them a fact, they go, ah, fuck your mother. That's, that's, you know, and I've yeah. seen that like on channels, not even in this genre, um, that that's, that's, that's what they do. But it, it just comes down to a couple of different things. And, and people ask me all the time, Hey, I'm new at this mob thing. I'm going to try my own show. And they play me their show and I'm straight up with them. Right. I was like, you got a good voice, but where you really need to work is this. Like, I'm not worried about competition. I just do my own thing. Sure. But what it truly comes down to at the end of the day is a couple of things. Number one, you cannot read a book and become an expert. Okay. Number two, if you're, if your expertise or your research skills do not involve court documents and talking to people around in those days, then you really can't be accurate. And number three, if you didn't grow up around a fucking gangster in your life, then you don't know anything. And I, I hate to say that. I'm not trying to insult people, but, but if you don't understand, and I guess what I mean by that is politics. if you cannot comprehend and understand the politics of the streets, then you cannot ac accurately describe to your audience why some of the choices may have been made. Right. And that's all I try to do, but I'm not for everybody. Right. You, you've seen the hate mail I get. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm going to be uh, saying mazel tov to you probably in a few oh, days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I've ever been called a Jew fuck more times in my life than in that email I got. And that's, what's ridiculous is like, I'm Roman Catholic, like or Marianite Catholic. If you want to put it that way. Yeah. That was crafty, man. That, that you were crafty finding out who it really was, but I'm not going to mention all that. Well, no, I mean, Pete, listen, anytime you send an email from an iPhone, I can, uh, trace. You I can trace it. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and I have to use ISPs because I have to get ISP addresses because nine nine times out of ten when this happens, it, it's just from like informants and idiots, and it just yeah. it is what it is, you know. Uh oh, now this one, I, this one, I don't know if I'm gonna. Okay, I hate all these rats hating on John Gotti Jr. They're all rats themselves. Jr. did not put anyone away like these punks. Okay, so. <sighs> Just to say, we always say you're you're. I think you give Gotti Jr. a fair shake in how you describe what. So, you know. here's my opinion. Okay, and once again, I'm going to term this by the streets. Uh, in the streets, anyone who sits down and talks to a government official or a cop is an informant. That's how the streets see that. My opinion does not fucking matter. That's how the streets see that. Uh, and I think that at the end of the day, who gives a fuck? The the guy's out of the life. He does his own thing. Uh, what do we care? Really? 
I mean, at the end of the day, uh, it, it would be different uh, if the parameters were different. But it, it's I it's I, I've I've always said on record since day one, the streets will view him a certain way, and that's really at the at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. I guess it doesn't matter what the fuck I think, right? You know, right. Uh, I don't know how many informants fought five trials in fucking four months after oh, that God, or whatever. That would be a record, man. I, I you know I don't know. How, yeah, it has to be a record. I don't know. I mean, how many times that's happened? Um. But, you know, once again, it, it comes down to if you don't like somebody, it's very easy to point certain things out. Well, you know, I mentioned this to you a couple of weeks back, how you always say the feds have no oversight and they just have such a hard on for the mob, especially. I mean, this is going back decades and decades. How many times and for the people in the audience in the past 10 years or so. Have you seen indictments on Russian organized crime, Albanian organized crime, or, or or other like you just don't see it like you do with the Italians? And that's for a reason, obviously. I mean, you know. So let me just define what a rat is in my book, because everybody seems to have their own version of what an informant is. Okay. An informant is the following. You know, an informant is somebody who testifies against someone else in a court of law to get absolution for their crimes. That is the textbook definition of an informant. Plain and simple. Street guys have a different viewpoint on that. They think anybody that talks to a cop is a rat. That's how they see things. So there is a difference. Um, I personally don't put any stock in who thinks what about anybody. I just don't care, you know, and I've always said that from day one, you know, people see things, people are going to see it, whatever the fucking way they want to see it. Does it really matter at the end of the day? You know, it's not like we're talking about a guy who put 50 people in fucking jail. There, there's right. a bit of a difference. You know, what would my friends say? They would say he's an informant. They would call him a rat and they have. But that's their opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Y you know, so it, it's, um, it, it's, it's, it's a, it, people try to pigeonhole me sometimes with that, but I just, listen, people have their own opinions, you know, and uh, it is what well, it is. You, you haven't wavered on, on years from day one, you know, you don't change like these other guys will change one minute no. to the next and, no, I think actually Lee Cole, I think Lee Cole, there's one show like when, you know, I went on his show like a year and a half ago or something mm -hmm. where he asked me, is John Gotti Jr. a fucking rat? And I said, according to the streets, he is. Which is the same thing you said now. Which is the yeah. same thing I'm saying now. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. Well, it is what it is. I mean, like you said, end of the day, who cares? He's